Yeah. I'm gonna do that first smack that one though. Let's do it. Temper and steel, boys. So Memorial Day is right around the corner, as you guys know. It's typically when participants around the world take on the MRF challenge. People are always asking us about the MRF workout and where it originated. Tell us a little bit about why Mike was so fond of the body armor workout and why it was his go-to workout. Man, I don't know if fond is a word I'd use for that. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Cause it, it, no one's fond. I know, I, that's just an odd word for Mike, that. He was, a, he was a functional strength guy it, yeah. to start out with. It wasn't, he wasn't a gym rat, he wasn't a big guy. He was a functional strength guy. So the, so the body armor workout, he kind of gravitated to I'll let you take it from there, but that's how I noticed. Yeah, we're running this because we, when you talk about Mike Murphy being uh, like, there's certain type of obviously, like you wouldn't have known by what he drove and how he worked out. I mean, he tried to be just as much, what, much of one of us as anything. That was that was the coolest part about it. I mean, he'd kick his own ass just to show us he could do it. That was that was I remember that. And it's funny when we talk about him and, and, uh, and everything you hear about him, man, he did it. And that greatest part of it but to become something like that, man, you got to have that other edge too. Like that, just ass kicking the ground all the time. That was one of the funniest parts about when we came up with that workout to do that in Afghanistan. Was trying to do a one-arm pull-up. We, we had read something and it was saying that was like a pure sign of strength, like gymnast strength, right? That one-arm pull-up. Mm -hmm. And we, we out there in Afghanistan, man, with that pull-up bar underneath that awning, we just kind of get under there every morning during PT. And then we couldn't do it anymore. We take the body armor off, hit it again, then we go into the weight room and pull, do that lat pull-down machine, and repeat it. And then there was some other stuff. That sounds that, like something he talked you into. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, man, this is the coolest part about him, dude. Like, he didn't have, there wasn't that distinction between the officer listen man during the ass kicking. He's like, hey, go out here, we're going to go start working out. And I was like, great idea. You know, because I was always trying to put on weight. I was, <laughs> and uh, it just, it was fun. Out there, we, that's, that's all we had to do. Yeah, and people, we're always limited, you know, when we're deployed, it's not like you always guys, have, especially yeah. in the beginning of the war, you didn't have a giant gym over here right, where you could work out. Right. You just had to make do with what you had. Yeah. So obviously if you can find a pull-up bar, you know, the back of the stairs, just anything you can do pull-ups on and you have your body armor and you got a place to run, you, you know, you can knock out the Murph. I, not, not to change anything in the Murph, but one of the things we would do is like one guy, when he was doing the pull-ups, the other guy had to hang and get that reverse strength. And the same yeah. on the lat pull-down machine, you had to wear your body arm and hang from that sucker. And that created a crazy, crazy strength, like that gorilla strength, man, for our hands and whatnot. Because we could climb, I mean, in Afghanistan, we were climbing our asses off, man. And that was part of it as well. But yeah, it was, it was something. And it's morphed into, or morphed into this. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's amazing to see how people gravitate toward the workout and the whole reason that we call it the MRF challenge is because when we would get people to take it on you know people would say oh, you know, memorial day MRF or just do the MRF people would think oh i'm going to show up on memorial day and i'm going to knock out this workout and then they'd get about two sets into it and realize like wow this is a really arduous workout so putting the name the Murph challenge really let people know like hey this is a challenge you know you need to really prepare for this you need to get yourself in shape you you need a good two months a basic two month workup so you can complete this workout you know unbroken without you know having to scale it down and do the proper movements through the workout and morgan you and murph were pretty close correct yeah we were on buzz together he was a class ahead of me so we 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 started our relationship early on uh, before we got into the teams and it just developed there because we ended up going out to STVs together and before he, he platooned up with with Marcus um, he and I would pal around we lived together for a little while me him and Jake and it, it was it was I can honestly say it Marcus mentioned it earlier you know you have this officer enlisted relationship and he, he was he could he he had the ability to navigate that fine line of professionalism when we were at work but then he was always definitely one of your best friends when when we weren't that's the best way to say that you know and uh, we everybody always respected that about him but god almighty boy he could get himself in some trouble man. oh man yeah if it hit the fan <laughs> <he> <laughs> <had> to, <laughs> yeah and the funny right? stories I mean, every good frog man does yeah <laughs> so i mean the the allure of mikey mike murphy and you know and and his act overseas and 
saving Marcus and putting out that call and winning the medal, man. He's he's a national asset. He's a national hero. And, man, he was just such a formidable force when he was kitted up and ready to rock and roll. But he's such a kind-hearted soul. And he and this lends itself to where he's from. I mean, New York City, right? And we got a chance to meet his friends and his family, and they were just... You can tell he was raised right by the people that he surrounded himself with, and it bled over. And we're from Texas, so we're like polar opposites, yeah. right? But we naturally gravitated toward each other. And God, I tell you, he could just bring the laughter, belly laugh out of you. And it wasn't something he would naturally try to do. It's just because he was, he was, he wasn't scared to make fun of himself because he, he, I wouldn't say he was he had he, this quirky look on his he face. He just had this. Like, Thing about him, yeah, and it's one of those things I wish I could articulate, but I don't really have the. It's almost like a so. Kramer kind of deal when he wanted to be. <laughs> yeah. You understand? Like his dad would always say, it still does. He's like Mikey's moral compass is straight up. I mean, where it's supposed to go, and that's absolutely right. I mean, morally, when it's time for that stuff to kick in, it was. There was no deviating from that. But I mean, if we had to go get into something, people kind of confuse that. Like, that's why he was a great SEAL. It was like he would back us up when he needed to, take the hit for the boys when he had to. And I was like, some officers won't do that. Oh, yeah. I mean, he'd take hits for us when we'd screw up. And he'd just sit there and get yelled. I mean, he would take it. That's how I think he, he mastered that look. Because he was getting yelled at. And he knew it wasn't his deal, but he had to take the hit on it. I mean, he would make us pay. That's probably why he was like where he, where he was. <laughs> and that's the respect they got. That's why we respected them guys hardcore, man. When them, them that act like that, those officers that treat us like that. And he and he was. That's why he got to, to take us on the opposite he did. And it, it I mean, Mojo's right. There'll be situations we get into it. A lot of times he, he'd be right there beside us. A lot of times it was us. Sometimes it was him, straight up, causing the, causing it. And we'd back him up. And because of that, we, I mean, look what we went and and, and accomplished, you know. And, and his dad says his moral compass is, is on point. I, I absolutely 100%. I, that was, and sometimes I could have said a Long Island boy, hockey player, mm -hmm. just I, you know, talk smack, just mean as. I mean, everyone knows what kind of the guys them they can be if they want to be, right? So it, it's it was a it was a blessing to have all of those designed into one. I, I thought he was, he was magnificent for the job. He was, truly. Is there something that you could tell us about Murph that not everybody knows? Something that. You know, what hasn't been portrayed in the movie or the book, just something that you experienced with Murph because of your close knit relationship. That that little shit, man. He would he his sh running shoes. Now you're supposed to change your running shoes out every two months or two hundred miles. His shoes were literally taped together, and when he would run the tape off, he would tape them back. And he's like, I don't see any need to spend any money on in new shoes because the tape works just fine. His cell phone back in the day when those things first came out was taped together. He drove this Ford <laughs> Green Ford, Ford Explorer. Explorer was just a. Hunt. That's you wouldn't know. He he didn't yeah. brandish the fact that he was an officer, at all. I mean, it was almost like he would wear that worn out stuff. Excuse me, because if we had cool stuff, he didn't need it. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it, that wasn't oh, yeah, that's, that's, how, that's how you always knew the best officers in the teams. Yeah, they are the ones lady, that drove like, the Lamborghini old junky Jeep with like, yeah, like, like four tires stuff, that man. don't even match. Yeah. They just they just don't care. You know, they come they in just, care. They, the style is just terrible. Dude, You're like, luggage. are you wearing desert boots in the bar? <laughs> like, is, is that how you dress? <laughs> his freaking luggage had, he wrote piss off. On, that's how you knew his bags, piss off on all of them. That's how you, it didn't put his name on it, it just said that. He just so, I mean, I got easy going. Yeah. Easy going because you you hear and you read you see you know, Mark and you read the books and this the whole it's just such a laid back guy and I, and I don't it's not insulting I hope for me to say that if you met him on the street or saw him in a bar, very unassuming. And he like oh yeah absolutely very unassuming not like like you know not the big guys like us even it's, bigger like you just just switch that gear when right it was time, in the man. middle. That's and awesome. such a kind hearted guy. Yeah, but was, I mean he wouldn't spend a penny. On anything materialistic, <laughs> not his thing. No, no. But it's funny because his, his fiance was such an amazing young lady, man. You would think that he would just try to beef, you know, polish yourself. Oh, you up. go back to the house, man. Polish the yourself house, up, lives up on the corner. Like that. No, I don't think, oh, I'm never good. White man. house, <laughs> little picket fence around it. And I mean, you walk out on Long Island, it was like a neighborhood. It was the funniest thing. But he could be whatever he wanted to. That was a cool part about running the way we did, man. And he, he, he led by example. That's the best. He did. He led by example, because we were just like him. I mean, he would get in situations that, that are just 
tough. And this, this, this workout does that, man. And I think it's just grown over time to where it, it, it teaches something about, I mean, we all got a little Michael Murphy inside of us, right? We need to have it. You gotta be able to handle yourself in, the, in each one of those times, good or bad, hard, easy, because the only easy day for us was yesterday. And we purposely go get into some of that stuff just to stay hard, so. And that was our life. And people ask us if we get used to that. I, I mean, we never do, we just keep doing it. <laughs> Biggest. Mike, you talking that to us? That was obviously funny. Yeah. <laughs> the only easy day was yesterday. Oh, amen. I am extremely grateful to be here and because of all of those that gave or made the ultimate sacrifice. And I'll never forget that. And there's so much going on in the country today and it's just so trying and turbulent times. But if you sit back and say, hey, you know what? Because of those that made went forward and did that and gave their lives so we could be sitting here today around this fire hanging out with each other i'll, I'll always say you know I'll give thanks for that i mean I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart yeah